Stephen, it's good to uh, talk to you again. How you been, mate? Yeah, busy. It's very, I mean, it's good. It's all good, but it's been a very busy week with the release. Um, yeah, uh, all good, though. Yes, all good. That's, I mean, yeah, you have been. I've been seeing you've been uh, all about town. You've been everywhere, dude. And it's cool to see. It's, I mean, and the, the response to the album has been uh, phenomenal because it is a phenomenal album. It's very cinematic, and I love how it flows like a soundtrack, and you've described it as a piece of cinema for the years, and that's a great way to explain it. But mm. It's much more than that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I've also said at this stage in my career, the thing that most appeals to me is the idea of making music that somehow exists in its own sort of genre, in a way, you know, so... The idea of making generic music to me at 30 years into my career really doesn't appeal. Mm. So this idea of trying to do something more cinematic, you know, one of the beautiful things about cinema, of course, is that, it, it you know, it, it goes through scenes. There are there are things that develop in a, in a movie. There are changes in the circumstances, changes in the mood, changes in the situation of the characters from scene to scene. And I like something like that analogous, you know, some, something musically that can be analogous to that idea of scenes in a movie where the mood and the and the circumstances mm. of the characters, in this case, the music is constantly evolving and changing. Did you, I mean, look, I, I had a unique experience with this album. I was, when okay. I got the stream come through, I was ridiculously sick with the flu. So I was laid up in bed for like three days. So I listened to this thing on repeat and, uh, man, it was like it's burnt into my memory. <laughs> it's like the soundtrack for this little time in my life. Oh. And it was such a, it was such an amazing journey to be able to listen to that album from start to finish because we don't, I mean, it's hard this day and age to like find the time. You, you always got to be doing something at the same time. But it, it forced me to just lay there and just let this album take me with it. And it was such a magical experience as I was sort of drifting in and out of some strange dreamway uh, thing. Mm. And it was just, it was mm. incredible. And I think in this day and age now, it, it, this album needs that. It needs that full attention. And I think it's made for that. Do you, do you feel that way that people need to give it that time of day? Yeah, very much. You know, I think one of the sad things for me is that living in the internet age, living in the, in the modern age, the age where we're kind of constantly, you know, bombarded with content mm. and stress and anxiety and we're all busy all the time. And that a lot of the time we don't get the time to engage with art as deeply as I remember engaging with it when I was a kid, you know, and I'm, I'm in my fifties now. So I'm talking about going back to the eighties here and the eighties, you know, the pre-internet era it was still about going to the record store on the day of release, mm. buying the new album, not knowing anything about it, except maybe the sing. you know, there'd be one single that might have been released before the album. Otherwise, you really didn't know anything about it. Taking it home, putting it on the turntable, turning the lights off, closing your eyes, whatever, and just allowing yourself to be taken away on on a, on a journey across the length of an album. And I think the reality is that a lot of people, you know, most of us just don't get that chance. I mean, you, you sounds like you had sort of enforced circumstances, you know, where you almost had to engage with the album, you know, in that way, which is fantastic. I wish, I don't wish everyone would get sick. No, no, no. But but I do wish, <laughs> was... I do wish that everyone would have that opportunity. And I think, you know, it's very hard as you kind of intimate, it's very hard these days to engage with something for any length of time without checking your text messages, without checking your email, mm. without doing all the multitasking that we kind of, we're expected to do in the 21st century. Um, and so it's very hard in a way to be making music in this kind of quote unquote old fashioned way that is almost expecting a lot more of the listener than perhaps most people are able to or prepared to give. But you know what? I don't let that stop me. I, I don't want to underestimate mm. the listeners. You know what I mean? I think there's always there's always people out there that are looking for something they can engage with on a more deep or on a more soulful level. And I suppose those are the people I make records for. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I saw all the pictures of, of the listening launch events. You know, he had it in the Dolby Spatial... Is that the cinemas, Ryan? And you turn the lights off? 
Yeah, we did a few. We've done. I yeah. mean, I did them in New York, LA, Berlin, Amsterdam. We did a few in London. It's it depended on depended on the city, the kind of venue we had. Some of them were cinemas, mm. some of them were studios, some of them were dedicated listening spaces for for spatial audio. I mean, those were really profound experiences for everyone that came. Not oh, you know, almost not because of my music, just the idea of listening in the dark with 30, 40, 50 other people to an album that's kind of coming from all around you, coming from above you, behind you, in front of you. It's a really moving, almost overwhelming experience. Um, And so to to see the look on people's faces at the end was just so, you know, gratifying for me. Um, And again, that going back to the idea of giving people the opportunity to just focus all their attention Mm. for an hour on a piece of music, a musical journey. So I'm I'm so happy we did those. And we're still doing them, actually. This I think, you know, I have to acknowledge that even though people are able to buy the record now, most people are still not going to ever, ever going to get to hear the spatial audio version. So I'm still planning to do some events like that if I can. Mate, I would pay a hundred bucks to do that. No shit. Well, well, that's like, great. Yeah. I, if you, if they, it, down here, because I know we're all the way down here, whether you were there or not, um, I would to have that experience with this album because obviously my I've got my stereo and stuff but it's not I, I want to experience this record the way it's meant to be experienced and I guess are, are there plans for Australia have you spoken to anyone about that or is it just you know what I would love to I mean basically we've relied a little bit on word of mouth so we mm. did the events in London and then we had various people approaching us um, we had some people approaching us in Berlin, Munich, we've, you know, saying oh, we've got a, an Atmos studio, we'd love to host an event. So if there's anyone out there listening to your show right now that has an Atmos ready room, it could be a small, it could be as small as a little studio room that can accommodate eight or 10 people, could be a cinema. If they reach out, you know, all we got, all we need to do is get the files to them. You know, that's all we need to yeah. do. Um, I'm totally up for as many of these events as possible. Okay. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look into that, man. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do some googling. Wait, please and, do. Please do. I'm absolutely serious. I'm absolutely serious. I would okay. love to do an Aust- in Australia. Yeah. Oh, that'd be unreal. Okay. All right. I'll, I'm gonna put a pin in that and uh, look into that afterwards. But you know, um, how's it gonna to translate to a live environment? Because you are very, very good at translating your songs to that to a live arena, like. I, I've I've seen you a couple of times, and you know you've. Are you planning to bring it to, you know, in in so, a similar way? Yeah, that that's the million dollar question that that everyone's asking me right now. Um, the simple answer is yes. The more complicated answer is that I would like to really extend exactly what we were talking about these kind of listening Mm. immersive audio listening events i would like to extend that to the live experience so rather than doing a tour where i'm playing a different city every night what i would prefer to do is do residencies in perhaps smaller venues but venues where they do have spatial audio system so that we can create a kind of immersive environment um, and i mean visually and sonically Mm. so we can we can kind of create this this kind of um light installation or this space that the audience will come into the music will be live but it will still be coming to them in spatial audio and so the only way for me really to be able to do that would be able to be situated in the same venue for say a week or two weeks at a time so that's what i would like to do i'm just beginning to think about that seriously now that i think would be really pushing things I mean, I'm all about really trying to do different yeah. things and innovate as much as I can now, um, and I think that would be that would be something that would really fire my imagination and kind of you know be a challenge that I would be willing to, very happy to take on. Mate, that would be incredible. Sorry, give me two seconds. I don't know if you can hear my labradontal. Darcy, Darcy, stop it! <laughs> oh man, she she's. There's probably the mailman or something out there. Sorry, mate. No, it's I'm always good. at the I'm worst good. possible time. Um, oh, no, I've got two of my own. I know exactly what you're talking about. Don't worry. And now she stopped for the moment. But um, I was because I was going to say I don't know if you've seen. Of course, you've probably seen it. That sphere is it called sphere? That venue sphere, which is like got the big massive. You two played there the other day, I think. Yes, the one. The one in is it the one in Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's the exciting thing right now is that there's, there are more and more, there are venues popping up now, which are 
being specifically constructed for spatial audio. And there are a lot of electronic and urban acts kind of taking advantage. Well, I say yeah. a lot. There are there are certainly more electronic and urban acts taking advantage of it than there are acts from from shall we say the rock tradition. Um, so I would like to think that I could be a little bit of a trailblazer in in as someone that's come from the sort of you know rock background in that sense. Oh, I I mean I'm all the way down here, but to see you play in that venue would be incredible <laughs> it would be one of the most amazing this space, experiences this space i'd oh. love to be able to pull it off so fingers crossed anyway i do have my fingers crossed for you but uh i did want to say your last solo album the future bites um mm. i've got it here but you can't see it. um i love that album. that album is incredibly important to me to the point where it is in my top 10 albums of all time um it, it really got under my skin i spoke to you last time about it when it came out um we didn't get to see your full vision of of what it could have been in a live setting. Is that something that you maybe want to revisit one day, or do you think that that time has passed on on that album cycle? Well, funnily enough, I did do a little launch launch event last week uh, mm. where I played a short thirty minute set, and I did do King Ghost from Future Bites. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I think this is this is exactly kind of what you're getting at in a way. When I do go out and tour, I'm going to have two new albums essentially to draw material from, exactly. to draw repertoire from. So yes, absolutely. I had lo- I had big plans for future bites, which I was which I was unable to realise. But now, looking on the bright side, that now means that when I do go out to do this, you know, this particular era of touring, I'm going to have two albums of new material to draw on. So yes, absolutely. I'm I'm definitely planning to bring some of that 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 material into this kind of album cycle, as it were. So a four hour show. Is that what we're talking? Uh, <laughs> no, just, no, no. I never thought I showed, but, but no. Um, well, well, what? Let's see. Well, I say, I have, do you know? I haven't even thought about how I'm going to pull off some of this material. It's going to be a challenge, you know. Yeah. But I do like a challenge. I do like a challenge. Absolutely. Yeah, and you and you always, yeah, you always pull it off, as I said before. And uh, of course, I mean, with Porcupine Tree, you released a closure continuation, um, mm. and uh, you know, we didn't get to see that down here. I mean, is that something that's that's passed as well is that something we we won't see in australia um I, w- I would never say never um we there was a lot we when we got back together we kind of agreed we were only going to do a very small number of shows in fact we did more than we ever planned to do yeah. even even doing the however many it was 25 or 30 we did we we only really intended to release the album and to do a, a handful of shows, really just just to kind of you know make a satisfying full stop to the story of Porcupine Tree, and inevitably it became a lot more than that. And we were very excited about the record. We were excited about touring, so we did a we did a whole bunch of shows, and we really enjoyed it, you know. And I think that was it, be- partly because there was very little pressure on the whole thing. Mm. Um, and that we kind of were viewing it as like a one off. We just went out there and we just had a blast. And be, and ironically, because we just went out there and had a blast, we got to the end and we were like, we should do this again, shouldn't we? <laughs> so um, I never say never. I don't think it's going to be any time soon. Um, but but I think it, it probably eventually we'll cut, we'll go out and do we'll do some more shows because we did have a lot of fun doing them. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the million dollar question is, and you probably know where I'm going with this one. But, um, where, when are we going to see you? I mean, like uh, we got the beers cold for you. We got the barbecue going. Like when are you going to come? See well, you? I mean, I refer you to the earlier thing. It, the, <laughs> my first task is to is to make this work. Yes, and get, of course, to put a show to get to put a show together. Uh, which is not just going to be another, you know, rock to something a little bit more challenging, something a little bit more different. And if it works, of course, my next thing is going to be right. Where else can I do this? Where else can I take this? Mm. Can I go to you know? Can I go to Australia and find a venue that I can do it for in a week? Can I go to LA? Can I go to India? Can I go? You know, all all of my favorite places that I love to tour. If I can find the right room, the right space, the right venue. Um, and and bring this show, uh, try and stop me, you know, yeah. absolutely. Oh, that'd be unreal. Um, I did want to ask you one more question, um, and that was in regards to you as a, a producer and uh, all the work that you do with, uh, you know, all these great albums, you're remixing them and stuff like that. But, you know, there's obviously, there's mainstream pop artists as well. Have they ever contacted you in regards to collaborating? Like, like Halsey did an album with 
Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. And mm. that was one of my favorite albums, like, ever. Uh, has mm. anyone gotten in touch to you know from from the mainstream pop world about collaborating with you that might interest you in that sort of way not really not really no um i mean that doesn't mean it's, it still couldn't happen but no i mean i'd love to you know i'd love to one of the things obviously that i could have easily done many years ago um i'd say 20 25 years ago there was kind of a fork in my career where i could have gone more into um, production and being more of a sort of background mm. person but my ego was so colossal that I you know I couldn't I couldn't allow myself to do that I wanted to be the guy up on stage doing it but you know what now now 20 years later in my 50s I'm thinking yeah, maybe I'd like to I'd like to work a little bit more helping other artists yeah um I've had a I've had a couple of interesting you know, offers recently, not to do with working with other artists, but working more in the sort of world of soundtracks mm, wow. and music for TV and doing music for movies and stuff. And that's something that appeals to me also, because I think my music's always had that kind of, well, we started off the conversation talking about how Absolutely. the new record has kind of got this cinematic quality to it. So it's it seems like an obvious thing for me to go more into that. But yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I'm I'm fascinated by modern pop at the same time, not really loving any of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I listen to a lot of it. I mean, when we were doing Future Bites, myself and my producer, we were listening all the time to stuff like Billie Eilish, and we were picking up on production. You know, the sort of production approaches those guys were using, and finding it really fascinating. But I found myself a little bit unable to completely fall in love with any of it. There was always something missing for me. And I wonder if if I could, you know, with the right artist, I could maybe bring that, you know, bring that to a project like that. Yeah. So interesting, interesting idea. Yeah. It would be. It would be. And of, of course, scores and stuff like that. I would love to hear you go down that that road fully as mm. well, because mm. I mean, it's impossible to rope. I think I think it's the opening to that. Um, yeah, is one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard in my life. I found it incredible, especially when I was in the state I was in. It it moved me to tears, and I'm not ashamed to say that it really, it, it really got in, in in under my skin. That one, it's a amazing. I, well, I, the, the, also, the the title track on the album is is a very oh, yes. you know, very tracky. You know, uh, it's this kind of big. In, it's a big sonic cosmic mm. sort of space. You know, so. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I, you know what, maybe this album will be a good calling card for me in terms of getting that kind of getting those kind of invitations. Now let's wait, wait and see. Yeah. Oh, hopefully, mate. Hopefully, but uh, in the meantime, we'll have all the links uh, in the show notes and on the website to the Harmony Codex, which is out now everywhere. Stephen, uh, thanks again for hanging out, man, and I hope you have a good birthday. We have the same birthday. I remind you every time. <laughs> so I hope. Oh, right. Oh, right. That's right. I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, well, like, likewise. And so, well, in fact, exactly a month today, in fact. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh it is. Hey, there you go, mate. Well, I hope you enjoy yours. <laughs> Brilliant. Likewise. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Nice to speak to you, buddy. You too, Speak man. to you again Bye. soon. Okay. Bye, mate. Bye.